Hello again, I am Blunty. I'm re-recording this intro because I asked a question at the end of the video that I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts about soon, and not everyone watches to the very, very, very end of the video, so I'm going to re-record the intro and ask it here, but what PC game release on the, on the near horizon are you most looking forward to? Because today's video is about upgrading my gaming rig. It's sitting to my right-hand side there. It is, in fact, my secondary PC because I have two fairly high powerful PCs, the one off to my slightly other right, le less right, the nor most more, more northern right. Shall we start again? No, I'm pushing forward. I've got a big rig there, a big mama threadripper to the little sister gaming rig, basically. And it's the little sister rig that's getting a big fat upgrade today because there's a bunch of bells and whistles I've had access to that the motherboard just doesn't let me have access to. So time for an upgrade. So if you ever thought you got a PC, you ever thought, I would like to do some extra stuff. You know, it doesn't support this, it doesn't support this, but I don't want to replace my whole PC. Uh, guess what? Upgrading your motherboard is a valid option and it's not as scary as it seems. So let's have a talk through how I got there and have a look at the befores and afters and what I was looking for and why. But firstly, because someone's going to ask, why do I have two very powerful PCs when one can do both jobs very clearly? Well, it's a little bit because I can, but it's mostly because it makes uh, streaming and recording and things like that a little bit easier when it comes to PC gaming, because that way I can just treat it like a console, basically, and hook it right up to a game capture card the same exact way I do when I'm streaming from consoles. Uh, and so the main rig can just do all the things uh, about streaming and not have to share its resources to run a game. You don't have to do it this way. Uh, there's many different ways you can set up a PC to run a game and stream at the same time. I've demonstrated this on even very low-end hardware. I'll link to some videos in the down below about that if you like. Uh, but it just makes life easier if you do a dual PC setup, which is why a lot of full-time streamers who do PC games do have a dual PC setup. It just makes things a bit simpler, more straightforward, uh, uncomplicates things a little bit. As counterintuitive as it may seem to be running two separate PC rigs, it does uncomplicate a lot of different things about streaming uh, and recording and producing content in particular. But the little sister rig, I've never called it the little sister rig before in my life, but today it just, it, it's, it's a useful metaphor. The little sister rig uh, is also my sort of test bench uh, where I sort of plug in a whole bunch of different video cards when I'm doing video card reviews or doing comparisons or doing performance uh, measurements. Just more convenient to do it that way. It means swapping drivers back and forth uh, doesn't affect, you know, the main rig, my mission critical rig where the work gets done. But while it is still a very powerful machine, it's had several upgrades over its lifetime and it is, you know, fully capable of 4K, 60 FPS, ray tracing, gaming, all that kind of stuff. There are a couple of limitations I've smashed up against recently, uh, mainly around USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, and also somewhat related to that uh, PCIe Gen 4. And of course, with that NVMe uh, Gen 4 times 4 and a couple of other little ancillary features that would have been useful quite recently are missing from the motherboard that I'm currently using at the rig. Because that motherboard's been in that rig through several CPU cycles now, so it's relatively old, and the CPU in there at the moment, well, that's 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 all it can possibly support. That is the absolute top end, the fastest, the, the latest, the, the CPU that can possibly support. So sooner or later, it was due for an upgrade, and now is the time. So right now, the quote-unquote little sister rig is humming along on an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X, and while it's not the latest 5000 series stuff, it's still a 12 core, 24 thread, absolute monster of a beast. And it is a long way from even being close to a bottleneck in the system, so that's going to stay. The memory in there is 16 gigabytes worth of HyperX Predator memory. It's fine. But as I was preparing for this upgrade, as luck would have it, Team Group reached out to me to see if I'd be interested in checking out some of their latest release stuff. Uh, under that T-Force branding, so they just released some classy looking new RGB RAM. So I snatched up a 32 gigabyte kit, so I'm doubling my memory capacity there. And at 3600 megahertz, it's even quicker than the 2933 megahertz that the HyperX maxes out at. And of course, as we all know, with the Ryzen technology in AMD's later CPUs, memory speed is one of the key factors in getting the absolute best out of it. They also sent in one of their new M.2 Carter Zero SSDs. Just the thing for my soon-to-be PCA Gen 4x4 capable motherboard. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. The system currently carries a 1TB SSD system drive, a 500GB SSD game drive, and a 2TB SSD game drive, which we recently upgraded to, all of which are, of course, quite nippy and perfectly fine for gaming, but not nearly as fast as the M.2 PCA Gen 4. 
There's a Gigabyte Eagle RTX 3070 in there. Again, recently reviewed that. That, of course, is staying. It's a completely capable card for the time being, unless, you know, someone out there sends me an even better card to slot in there. That's what we're sticking with. But then we come to the motherboard. This is the key component about this upgrade. This is where it all started. The motherboard, I needed to upgrade the motherboard to activate all the other features that I wanted to get at. The old one in there is a very trusty mid-range Gigabyte, the GAAB350N Gaming Wi-Fi. It has been rock solid for years now through, as I mentioned, three different CPU upgrades and countless hours of gaming. And I don't even know how many GPU swaps for various reviews and comparisons and performance tests. And quite frankly, if I didn't need USB 3.2 Gen 2 and PCIe 4 for the sake of future product reviews and such, I'd probably be happy to keep it. It is extremely trusty, very, very well built, never has given me any issues at all, which is, again, one of the reasons I like to stick with Gigabyte, because none of them have given me any problems. And of course, I'm pointing them out because I have gone Gigabyte again for the upgrade. Naturally. Find something you trust? Stick with it. Don't fix what ain't broke. Gigabyte? Rock. And a big thank you, by the way, to Gigabyte coming to my rescue on this. They hooked me the heck up with this Aorus X 570i Pro Wi-Fi, an absolute monstrous ITX board, and of course, can support the latest generation of AMD Ryzen CPUs too. So if I do have an opportunity to kick up to the 5000 series or whatever comes next, easy peasy. And it covers everything on my want list, starting off with dual PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots. Quite a lot of ITX motherboards that support PCIe 4 only have one M.2 slot, or if they have two M.2 slots, only one of them actually supports Gen 4x4. Damn cheap bastards, but not Gigabyte. Gigabyte have gone all out. Not only has it got the two slots, but they're both run at absolute full speed Gen 4x4. And of course, the PCIe slot is PCIe 4.0, a doy. So for graphics cards going forward, that will take ever more advantage of the extra bandwidth that's on offer. I am ready. And as I mentioned, the, the, the existing rig has had so many graphics cards in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. So I know for a fact that Gigabyte use very reliable PCIe connectors that don't wear out very easily over time because <laughs> I'm not especially careful when I do the swap a lot of the time. And of course, it has a USB Type-C connection on the back with full support for USB 3.2 Gen 2 and a Type-A connection with USB 3.2 Type 2 as well, which unfortunately also brings us to the final upgrade of this build. I'm going to have to swap out the case. The case I'm using, I love. The Inwin A1, it is a beautiful, beautiful ITX case. It's got sort of underglow on everything. It's really nice to work in. It's compact and tidy and quiet and it looks great and I love it. It even has a, a charge pad on the top for your wireless charging of your phone if you want to use that. Uh, but unfortunately its front panel ports don't have the USB Type-C that I'm after. And so I'll be moving the entire rig over to the NZXT 210i which I reviewed a year ago, I think. Uh, it's really nice ITX case, has tons of room in it. As of course I demonstrated in my original review of that case, it has room in the front there for a full-on 240 RAD, so I built a custom auto cooling loop for it. This time around, I'll stick with the air cooler for now, but there is an all-in-one uh, water cooler coming to market soon. It hasn't been announced yet, but I've been told I'm probably going to get one to check out. So we will be doing an upgrade to that later on. For now, though, we'll stick with the air cooler. So new Gigabyte motherboard to support all the bells and whistles I want access to. Easy done. T-Force came to the party with an M.2 Gen 4 drive for super speedy game loads and all that kind of stuff. And doubling my memory capacity and speeding it up at the same time. Thank you very much for that. And moving the whole thing across into a new case, more of out of necessity than anything else, because I need those front panel ports to be fully functional. I want Type-C because Type-C is becoming more and more useful as we move forward, of course. So from this to this, the new slightly bigger little sister rig. And again, I do lament moving away from that in-win case. I really love that in-win case. It is spectacular. But my main rig is also in the same series of NZXT case, the 510i, the full size version of it, basically. So at least both rigs match now. And while the NVMe drive is invisible, of course, buried in the motherboard, I already know for a fact how much of an impact on game load times these buggers can have. So glad to finally have one in my actual game rig. Uh, and as for the RAM, well, it's 3600 megahertz RAM. It's kind of inherently not super interesting these days. That's kind of the sweet spot standard for high performance Ryzen based gaming rigs really, but I do love the super clean lines and the nice soft RGB it has, which you will be able to see a bit easier once I move this rig to that water cooler I was talking about, because the air cooler is kind of bulky, of course. 
And of course that RGB lighting on the RAM can be controlled through the Gigabyte software that comes with the motherboard to control its onboard RGB. Uh, so it's got some on the back of the motherboard at the edge there. Uh, it's also, you know, you can control your light strips and you can control your fans hooked up to it, but it can also control the RAM. I love having all the RGB through one software interface. So if you are out there thinking like me that you want access to some of these new bells and whistles, but the rest of your PC is still pretty damn good. Uh, you can just replace the motherboard. It is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can't, you know, if it's your first time ever replacing a motherboard, it can be pretty intimidating because there's lots of wires to reconnect. But again, like I've talked about in previous build videos, it's kind of hard to get it wrong unless you really try and force things because most of these plugs only plug in correctly one way around. Uh, they're all labeled and everything. So as long as you're patient and slow and pay attention and, you know, double check the manual if you're trying to figure out which, you know, head of the fan is supposed to go into things like that because there are separate fans for the case fans and the CPU fan. It doesn't really matter which ones you plug them into, but the software that controls those uh, refers to which one you plug into. So it's best to plug them into the more appropriate spot, things like that. But yeah, if you've never done a motherboard upgrade, there's no reason to be intimidated by it. It's it's not that scary. And it can make a huge difference in the number of feature sets you can get to. So thank you again to uh, TeamForce and thank you again to Gigabyte for coming to the party and helping me out on that. Uh, and keep an eye out because you'll see this rig in the very near future as we do the water cooler thing. And I'm sure you'll see it soon in some video card uh, reviews and things like that. Hopefully anyone anyway, can get access to that summer st sort of stuff. Uh, and of course, whatever else going forward as well. So, hope you found this interesting, uh, or at least entertaining, one or the other, perhaps both, hopefully both. Thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time. Uh, not sure when we're going to be streaming a PC game next, because right now I'm all about Must Hunter Rise. I don't even think about anything else. Well, uh, there's a question for the day. What PC game release are you looking forward to coming up? Maybe that's, maybe that's the first game we'll stream off this rig.